Hello folks, now that we have elemental arrows, now we need a way to switch those elements. So we'll set up this menu. So it's a little bit different than the other one, so this one will just be a pressed and released. And when you hover over it, it changes what you're on. That way if you're in the middle of combat and need to change, boom, you're fire, boom, shock, water, or ice, whatever, we, whatever yours is. Or back to plane. So we'll set the menu up to where pressed it comes on and this mouse cursor is brought directly back to the center of your screen. So let's go do that now. Alright, so I'm over here in our project. I'm going to go into the HUD elements folder where we have all the HUD con pertaining to our player. and I'm going to create a new one. So this will be my elements underscore W. And I'm going to double click and open that up. Now I'm going to wrap the canvas panel with the scale box and a size box, just like always. And I'm going to default this to 1920 by 1080. Compile that. Now I want a background blur. So I'll drop that right on the canvas panel. Anchor it to the full screen and reset all the offsets back to zero. Now I'm going to set the Z order to negative one so that everything automatically goes on top of it. Now I'm going to add an image to the background blur that will be black and mostly see-through. Now with the background blur we also need to make it uh, actually blurry because if you notice it is not. So under appearance you can do blur strength right here and you can set it to whatever you like. So see now it gives it a nice blur in the background. I don't want anything too crazy. Maybe just like 1.5. That's looking alright. Now I am going to drag a button onto the canvas panel itself and for that button I'm going to set it to Z order to 1 just to make sure it 0 should be fine but zero, uh, setting it to 1 works also. <laughs> I'm going to anchor it to the center, reset its offsets and then align it 0.5 on both so that it's dead center and then I'm going to take a look and see what um, what size I made the other ones there it is. Okay, so these were 200 by 100. Alright, so it will be size 200 on the X, 100 on the Y. Then I will drop a text block right onto it. Size 30 on that with light typeface and center justified. This one will be my plain arrow button. So whatever you wanted to call it, just uh, that's whatever your base element type is, or not, pff, neutral. <laughs> whatever you're calling neutral, vanilla, plain, whatever it is. So I am going to make sure that you rename the variable up here to plain, or whatever yours is called, that way it's easier to find. And then I'm just going to move it up. Let's see. about negative 150. That looks pretty good. Then I'm just gonna duplicate it, reset its X position, set its position Y to positive 150 so that it's an even amount to the bottom. This one will be my, I think I've updated the element to be water, but I'll just call it ice for now. Ah, water. Water's, water's more accurate on mine because of the particle systems I'm using. So now I will, oh, and then we'll rename that button to the element. Then we'll duplicate, reset the Y this time, and then position X will go to 250, I think it was. And this one was fire. Duplicate one more time reset it on that and then negative 250 so it's all evenly spaced out oh, this was a this was my shock element 
Now, one thing I did do on the last one was um, there is something called a throbber that is usually used for loading screens, but I kind of liked it for um, just a little circular thing. So I'm going to anchor it to the center, reset its offset, 0.5 and 0.5 on the alignment, and then just scale it out to where it's about there on the X. So about 500 on the X, and then 150, 150, so probably 300 on the Y. That looks good. So now you can update how fast it moves through this period right here. So if I set it to like 0.1, you see it's going really fast. But if I set it to something like 15, it's going really slow. So a number of pieces, I'm going to set it to 15. I might set the period to about 30. 30. What was the other one? Hang on. Circular throbber. 30. Number of pieces, 25. Okay, I'll just do 25 then. So 25 for my number of pieces. And now for the image size, this is what will control the actual size of those dots. So I'm just going to double it, bump it up to 16. And then it has a nice little circular effect. Now you can change the color and opacity of those if you want. If you want to, I say that. Oh, I'm on that, that's why. So you can change the color and opacity of those if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave it white for mine. So now what we need to do is inset. Oh, did I change that last one? Water. I need to change the names of these buttons real quick. Fire. Shock. All right, so now inside the graph, we'll get rid of that, get rid of that. On the event construct, we need to cast to our player blueprint so that we'll be able to access her information. For the object, get player character. And then we can just promote this to a variable. So we'll promote that just like that. Player ref. So now for these buttons, we are going to want not clicked events, but on hovered events. So it's number one, two, three, four down. It says on hovered. And this will activate whenever your mouse goes over it. That way it's a quick, just quick fire, just boom. You can switch really, really quickly. So fire, water, shock. All right, so now what we want to do is on hovered, we want to update our character's element type to match. So I'm going to grab my player reference and put them right in the middle of all these buttons. Can kind of move them a little bit closer. So I want to set my elemental attack type for the first one, plane. Control C and Control V to duplicate. Set this to fire. Hook that right there. Control V. This one is ice. Okay. Either, you know, ice or water. And this one was shock. I should probably have a consistent way of naming these things, but that'll be fine for now. So now when it's on hovered, it will update our character's type, element type. So now we need to actually get this widget on screen. So the way I'm going to do this is inside the player blueprint, I'm going to add an event on the C key. Oh, that's going to take forever to get to. If you right click and type one, you can get a keyboard event immediately. And then you can just change it up here, and it's a lot easier than scrolling through all those things. I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. I was mimicking scrolling, and then I just did that. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, so this is going to be on a pressed and released. So on pressed, we want to see if something is valid, because we're going to promote it to a variable. So we'll just go ahead and do the is valid check right off the bat. So we don't have the input object yet, but if it's not valid, then we want to create a widget that will be our elements widget. Promote that to a variable of our element underscore w. 
and we'll add the viewport right here. We'll drag it up so that if it is valid, we'll just go ahead and recenter it right on there. So we'll hook our element widget up to the input object to see if it is valid. Back this up. And then on released, we're going to check one more time to see if it is valid, just in case there's ever an instance where you press the button and it doesn't create it for whatever reason. So it doesn't try to destroy something that doesn't exist. Unreleased is valid. Grab out one more. And we will remove from parent. Okay, so now we need to do here at the end, we're going to get player controller. I just typed in controller. Get player controller so that we can set the input mode to game and UI. I'm going to move that up like that. Our elements widget is what the, the widget we want to focus on. And then we want to set show mouse cursor. We'll plug that in like that and set that to true. Now on this end, we want to get the player controller one more time so that we can set the input mode back to game only and then set show mouse cursor to false. So we'll hook that right up just like that. So now if we jump in, take a little quick little look-see. Oh, the C is the crafting menu. That's why I didn't use that one in the other one. All right, I'm going to hook this up to uh, G. I don't think I'm using G for anything right now. So. so, yeah, if you need to update, you don't have to delete it and then reattach. You can just whatever button you want. So now, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now, if you want it to be a quick fire, like... um just push the button and then basically move your mouse in the direction you're wanting to go. See how my mouse is way over here? It'd be real nice to be able to just snap it back to the center, wouldn't it? Well, we can do that. So let's do that. So this is something we'll want to do on pressed. So we are going to get the player controller for a third time because we want to set the mouse position. So we'll hook this just like that and just like that. Now you can hard code and just, well, so the way a widget works is if you look in here, the, the widget has its own coordinates. So if you look right here, you can see I have an X and a Y value. And right here is zero, 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 or zero, zero. So whenever I push it, if I left it there, my mouse would always be in the top left. So you can hardwire and just be like, well, I've got this set to 1920 by 1080. So if I just half those, that should be the center, right? You'd be right. But if someone else is playing your game and they have the resolution set to something different, it might not work as intended. So what we're going to do is get the viewport size. Then we're going to break that vector. So this will get the size of the viewport. Whatever they've got it set to, that'll that'll do. So we're going to divide this by two so that it cuts it in half. And then we can truncate, which is just rounding it towards the nearest zero. And then we can plug that into the X. And then we can copy that and paste it to the Y so that no matter what size their viewport is, no matter what resolution scale they're set at, it'll always get the exact center and move it there. So now when I jump in, and uh, hey, there's my thing. So I can just kind of quick fire every time straight to the center, no matter which way I was looking. If I'm running this way and I want to change elements, boom, I just change that quick. Just like that. Now, one last thing we will do real quick is uh, on our player HUD. <clears throat> player HUD. This is our arrow count, right? Arrow, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so above this, I'm just going to duplicate this and then drop it into position right above. Let's see. 68, 852, 64. All right, so 68, 
800. And the text I want for this, I'm going to bind that to our players element type. I ain't seen it. Alright, I'm just going to go create a binding. Drag out my player re drag out my player reference. Get elemental attack type, which probably is the right way to do it anyway, because we're gonna need to go to string just like we're doing for the data tables and then let it convert from string to name or text or whatever that is. So now when we come out here, I'm gonna save everything real quick. Hop on in the game. And then yeah, now you can see in the bottom left, plane, shock, fire, water, water, oh ice, okay. <laughs> I'm just going to update that real quick, I should be consistent in my naming, ice, ice, baby, alright, then we are all set. So now, oh, that's the wrong button. All right, plane, ice, shock, fire. All right, so it's updating. So now each time, let me do this real quickly. Because I think we set up the, the elemental arrow types last time, the actual particle system. So we should be able to fire a fire arrow. That's, uh, that's going to get old. All right, ice. Yeah, shock. And we're updating on the fly. Oh, one more thing we could do. Oh, yeah, let's do one more thing. All right, so what we can do is if you want to be more tactical with your shifting of elements, what we can do is we can set the global time dilation. So on the widgets on screen, I'm going to set it to 0 0.1, so time is running at 10%. And then we can copy and paste this back over here on the closing screen and just set it back to one. So now, yeah. So now we can update on the go and it's, you know, slows down time, allows for a little bit more tactical decision making. Especially when we get to where we're combining arrow effects. So if you shoot them with the ice arrow, which is actually going to be water, I'm just I'll, I'll go in and rename that. Um, then you shoot them with the shock, it'll do other stuff. So yeah, but that's it for this one. Is that it for this one? That's it for this one. In the next one, we'll update that a little bit further, and I will see y'all there. Bye.